This is one of my favorite casseroles to make in the fall and the winter. And this version has butternut squash, apples, sausage, and several other delicious ingredients. Here's how I make it. First thing I'm going to do is get the oven going at 400 degrees. And I'm going to start off this recipe with a wet paper towel. That's going to go down on the counter. That's going to keep my cutting board from sliding around because I've got to cut up this butternut squash. And it's January in Iowa, but I've still got butternut squashes left over from the fall harvest from my backyard garden. If you've got some space in your yard where you could grow some butternut squash, I highly recommend it. The flavor in the homegrown squash is just a lot better than the store-bought. I don't know exactly why, but it is. Pretty much any fall squash will work. I've made it with buttercup squash. I've made it with acorn squash. Uh, I have never tried pumpkin, but uh, yeah, feel free to use your favorite squash in place of the butternut if you don't have that. But the best way I know to clean the squash is to cut both ends off. That way you've got flat surface on both ends and one flat surface you can put down on the cutting board. And then I just take the knife and go from top to bottom and just taking that skin off one little strip at a time. And the skin on a butternut squash is kind of thick. You could use a vegetable peeler for this, but you, you'll have to go over it uh, more than once. Uh, one pass with a vegetable peeler is not enough depth to get all the skin, so you kind of got to go over it twice. I like to do it with a knife. It's kind of tedious, but it works. Gets the job done. The key is to remove all the pale white skin uh, until you've got a nice bright orange showing. Now I'm going to cut the squash in half lengthwise there keeping that flat side on the cutting board so it doesn't roll around. And I'm going to go ahead and remove those seeds just using a little teaspoon here and just kind of scrape them out. There's a little membrane that kind of lines the inner part of the seed pocket there. And if you can get underneath that with the spoon, that uh, the whole clump of seeds just comes out pretty easily. And if you're thinking about planting your own squash, save some of the seeds out of your store-bought squash and plant those. That works just fine. That's what I did quite a few years ago, and uh, I just keep saving the seeds every year. I'll save a few seeds and uh, replant in the next spring. But I'm going to cut this squash lengthwise in about uh, one inch wide strips, and then uh, flip it around and cut it crosswise, so I've got some uh, kind of one inch by one inch kind of size chunks. It's an odd shaped uh, vegetable, so the pieces aren't going to be all the same size and shape, but that doesn't really matter. Alternatively, you could cook the squash whole or like just cut it in half with the leave the skin on and cook it that way and just scoop out the cooked flesh. Uh, that just takes a long time to cook that way, but you can certainly do it that way. I like to cut it up like this. It really shortens up the cooking time. So I've got these squash chunks in my baking dish here, and I'm just going to add some canola oil, probably about two tablespoons there, and some salt and some pepper and some garlic powder. And I'm just going to give those a toss and get uh, those squash chunks all nice and coated in that oil and seasoning. And I'm going to cover these with foil and put it in that 400 degree oven. They're going to need to cook in that oven for about 30 minutes. While that's happening, I'm going to turn on the burner to medium high heat. And I've got some Italian sausage here. I'm going to get that browning. I have made this dish with ground beef as well, and I'm sure that would work, or ground pork, whatever meat you choose, but the sausage really has a, a great flavor, and it really goes with that kind of fall harvest theme that I'm going with with this dish here. Next up is some onion. Uh, these are just yellow onions. These are kind of small here, so I'm going to use two of them. Otherwise, just I would probably just use one uh, medium or large onion. Just going to dice that up, move it off to the side. And next is a couple of apples. When I make this dish, I usually try to find the apples in the fridge that look like they're the oldest apples in the fridge. <laughs> or maybe they have a bruise or two or something like that. These two fit the bill. This one here is a sweet tango apple and the other one's a honey crisp. But it doesn't matter what kind of apple you have. Just use what you have. Just going to get the skin off of those with the vegetable peeler. And then I just kind of cut apples basically the same way I do like a bell pepper. I just uh, set it down on the cutting board and slice it downward and just shave off the uh, sides and just leave the core behind. Yeah, there's a little bit uh, of apple gets wasted, but it's negligible amount really. And I'm going to dice these apples into about half inch size pieces. Uh, I kind of want to make them small like that so they'll cook. Apples uh, seem to take a while to cook if they're in big chunks, so about half inch size works pretty good. Next up is some frozen spinach. As you can see, I went with the grade A fancy kind because I am a total fancy cook. And this frozen spinach does tend to be kind of watery, and I've defrosted it in the microwave. And what I found the best way to get rid of that excess water is to just squeeze the whole packaging over the sink. And a bunch of that water will come out, and what you're left with is your spinach. Normally I like to use fresh kale for this recipe, but it's January in Iowa, and my garden kale is long gone. So I'm going to be using uh, this frozen spinach as a replacement green. 
And this sausage is starting to brown up nicely. I've got a new tool that I'm trying out here today. This is called a meat chopper. It was recommended to me by a viewer. Until recently, I didn't even know such a tool existed. I had been using a, a potato masher for quite a long time, but uh, it works pretty good. It does take a little bit more work than it does with my potato masher, but I don't have to be as careful with this thing because it's made out of plastic. With the potato masher being made out of metal, I kind of had to pay real close attention to what I was doing to not mar up the pan. But with this thing, I can just go crazy and not have to worry about the pan at all. So to that sausage pan, I'm going to add the apples and onions and go ahead and get that mixed up real well and then put the lid on I'm going to turn the heat down to medium and uh, let those apples and onions and sausage uh, cook there for probably about 10-15 minutes and while that's happening I'm going to get some cheese ready my favorite cheese to have with this casserole is cheddar that was an 8 ounce package of cheese and I'm using about half of that package here uh, for this casserole tonight and I'm going to give these uh, apples and onions and sausage a stir every couple minutes just make sure nothing's burning but uh, keeping that heat on medium and after about 10-15 minutes, as you can see, the apples and onions are uh, softened and uh, they're looking pretty delicious as they are right now. But I'm going to go ahead and add the spinach, get that mixed around in there. And uh, now, you know, this dish is really starting to come alive here. I mean, boy, that's starting to really look good. Lid goes back on there and it's been about 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the squash out and uh, give it a check. I know I said earlier that squash takes about 30 minutes and it's only been 20 now, but for some reason I find that different squashes just seem to have different cooking times. I don't know if it's because of the different moisture content in each individual fruit, but uh, for some reason some squashes will cook faster than others. Just thought I'd check it here. Looks like this one is still a little too firm. I want to be able to pierce that squash easily with a fork, much like you would if you were like cooking a potato. I want it nice and soft. This is still kind of firm. I'm gonna go back in the oven for another 10 minutes or so. And while you're waiting for the squash to finish cooking, you can keep yourself busy by oiling any squeaky hinges in the cupboards or picking up the little bits of spinach that you spilled on the floor earlier. 10 minutes later and uh, let's check on the squash. That is looking more like it. You can see how that fork just easily slides right into that squash. And if I turn that fork around and try and smush a piece, it just smushes easily. That's what we're looking for. Now you could mash this into a paste at this point if you like that. I kind of like mine to stay a little chunky, so I'm just going to mash it down a little bit with a fork. And uh, that's going to give me some soft, mushy texture, but also some chunks of squash. And I really like that. And the squash is going to be the base of our casserole. And on top of that squash is going to come that uh, whole mixture that we made earlier, the sausage and apples and onions and spinach. And I'm going to pack that down pretty firmly with the back of the spoon. I don't want any air pockets in there. I kind of want it to be nice and tight so it'll cook well. And here comes the cheddar cheese. Cheese goes on top, goes back in the oven uncovered for probably another 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes later, the cheese is melted and uh, it's all bubbly. And uh, I like mine just a little bit browned on top. But if you like yours darker brown, go for it. I recommend just letting this rest for about five minutes or so. It'll kind of come together a little bit, and it'll also help you to not uh, burn your face off when you take your first bite. And tonight we're just having a side salad with this, but uh, a nice crispy, crusty baguette would be a, a great uh, pairing with this casserole also. But the combo of the creamy butternut squash, the flavorful sausage, and the apples and onions is just, it's just really good. You're going to have to try it. But that's my recipe for fall squash casserole. I hope you found that useful. See you on the next one.